all new from Finercy, the S1, today in the Cheapo Spotlight. Shout out to Banggood. Thanks so much for sending the Finercy in for this review. <laughs> Finercy, a name who's really coming up and about. They've got some pretty cool meters as of late, and this looks to be no exception. The S1, all new in the Cheapo Spotlight, and I'm excited. I love the blue. I love that sky blue. Top-notch packaging, as always, on the Frenercy. Always got this nice black foam, I've noticed, in their meter. So uh, lots of added protection. What do you get in the box? Well, of course, you get those test leads. Take a closer look, but these are Cat 3 rated 600 volts, and they look to be on the big side, which I like. Get our Frenercy instruction manual. Frenercy S1 digital multimeter. Nice clean bold font really good paper excellent and we get that rechargeable usb adapter because yes this is rechargeable oh excellent and finally a thermal couple attachment because it does temperature as well so lots of little accoutrement in the cheapo box i love accoutrement when we compare the S1 to some other multimeters it's definitely on the small side but hey that's not necessarily a bad thing in fact, if we put the S1 beside my cell phone, the Samsung, uh, look at that. A little bit smaller even, but nonetheless, same dimensions almost. Okay, now I just want to get my cell phone back. There we go. All right. <clears throat> Already, let's turn on the Finercy for the first time. Power switch right at the top, as well as that USB-C charging port. Hold down for about a second and it turns on. Bada boom, bada bing. And we are greeted with that nice color LCD display. Oh, first glance, it looks really, really good. As well, you notice it has a bar graph at the top of the display as opposed to the bottom. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. And it's a dual colored bar graph. Also, we have our auto shutdown uh, icon at the far left, as you can see, just letting us know that we are in auto shutdown mode over there. But generally speaking, man, that looks really, really nice. Pretty basic in terms of controls. We have our live NCV on the far left. In the middle, we have our power select switch. And on the far right, we have our hold. This can do volts, AC, DC, resistance, continuity, diode, capacitance, frequency, non-contact voltage, and live wire. Whew. Say that three times. Font as well, a little chunky, funky. I like it. Not too small, not too big. In fact, it fits perfectly on that display. And speaking of display, 10,000 counts, or 9,999 uh, display itself. Unit is 143 by 75 millimeters and 19 millimeters in width, so not big at all. Now, just before I forget, and I tend to do this sometimes, let's take off the display cover, shall we? Oh, much better, much, much better. Right now, it is an automatic mode, and while you're in automatic mode, AC-DC voltage as well as resistance and continuity is automatically measured, meaning nonetheless that you don't have to pick the range. It will automatically determine it for you. Okay, let's see if it works. Sitting at 5.00 is what we want, and I'm going to turn on that voltage precision reference, and bada boom, bada bing, there we are, 4.999 volts. Now, just so you know, this was actually heating up for about 10 minutes prior to turning it on the first time. So it is well toasty. Um, pretty darn close. One count out. Once again, this has pretty good speed as well. Let's just take another look. I'm going to turn off that reference. And turn it back on. Let's see how quickly it picks up that voltage. Yeah, that is definitely fast. Let's try the same thing now for AC volts. And oh, interesting, isn't that cool? So we're getting our voltage readout, true RMS, as well as our frequency. Very nice. And boy, is that ever easy on the eyes. 
60 hertz, 119.5 volts, AC, super clear. Oh, wow, that just looks great. Something else that's interesting is that bar scale as well. Look at that. So this, I'm assuming, is around 200 volts uh, reference. And being at 120, we're just over the halfway mark. So in this case, this would probably go up to 1,000 volts. Now, when you're charging the meter, you have that nice red LED, just letting you know that indeed it is in charging mode. But unfortunately, uh, you can't use it while you're charging. Ah, too bad. 100-ohm precision lab resistor, a little off here, coming in around 100-ish, 0.8 ohm. Or not, but yeah, so resistance just not quite as accurate as the DC voltage. Now, mind you, we are in smart mode, so let's take it to manual. See if that makes any difference in terms of accuracy. And isn't that interesting? So it actually does 100.8. Five. No, it's, no, it's going up again. Interesting. So a little bit more accurate in resistance in manual ranging mode as opposed to the smart mode. Go figure. Okay, we're in smart mode right now. Let's just try the speed of resistance in smart mode. See how it is sitting at uh, 6 megs right now. Let's do 10 megs. Yeah, not bad. Let's do 100. Sorry, 1.1 meg 1.3 megs 1.6 megs 2 megs oh yes 6 9 and sitting at 11 meg ohm right now a little bit slow there a little bit slow as you get higher in the range but still nonetheless not too shabby not too shabby for smart mode i gotta say finally 100k 110k, 111k, 311k, 611k. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Now, is it just me or does something seem a little weird? Oh, pretty baby. Oh. I got you in my sights. Yeah. I hear you are super smart. Uh huh. Just the way I like them. Oh, yeah. Don't be shy. was weird anyway check out those test leads oh yes gold tipped ultra sharp just the way i like them yeah very nice okay continuity time is next already three two one here we go hey nice nice now i'm in the manual ranging mode Ooh, loud and latched let's try the pro masters already pro masters Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. Latched and loud. Seventy-eight point two decibels. Maximum output volume in continuity. Form factor-wise, very nice in the hand. Uh, one thing that I'm not keen on is the fact we don't have any rubberized grip. So you could possibly lose this if your hands were a little bit slippery or wet, but uh, we do have those little grooves which help a little bit, but still a little bit of rubber here probably would have been a good idea, but overall, not bad. Already diode LED, light emitting diodes. Here we go, starting off with that red LED. Lit. Same with the green, and there's our forward voltage drop over to the yellow. Not a problemo. Onto the white. And the blue. Five for five. Awesome. Maximum output in diode mode, 3.9 volts. So here we are doing some NCV on the mains, and it's a little funky. Uh, not doing such a great job. It, it picks it up there, then kind of loses it, and it can't regain that... Uh, that, that, that sensing, so uh, I don't know, it's a little bizarre. By the way, that flashlight is pretty bright as well. Lots of illumination coming from that small LED. And while the little flashlight is not as bright as I originally thought, look at that. 
Not even 30 lumens, 28.7 lumen. Ah. Alrighty, teardown time is what it is. Let's start off with the reverse side of the board. Uh, nothing much going on. No shielding. Uh, your basic ABS style plastic. Not much to it. And there is the main PCB in all of its glory. Top of the meter, we have our piezo, and on top of that, a relay. And just below that is our LCD driver. That's the TM1621B from Shenzhen Titan Microelectric, giving us that gorgeous LCD display. There's the brains of the unit, the multimeter IC, the ICE, SDIC, part of the SD7500 series, the SD7502. Built in 24-bit uh, analog to digital converter, 16K bytes of OTB memory, has the uh, built-in true RMS, the whole nine yards, uh, built-in voltage dividers, you name it, this is definitely cutting edge. And let's not forget that rechargeable battery, 1,000 milliamp hours, 3.7 watt hours, 3.7 volts. There it is. Um, these have a pretty good uh, longevity as well. And you know what? If you have to change it, they're readily available. So good choice. Finally, going down to the bottom of the board, uh, there is the one and only PTC. Now, remember, this does not do current, not even low current. So the uh, robustness of the input protection is definitely not going to be anywhere near uh, as if it was doing some kind of current. So no current shunt, uh, no fuses, what have you. One PTC on the voltage side, of course, and a couple of those split variety input jacks. But look at the soldering. Look at the soldering. Such nice soldering job here. I mean, big, thick globs of Oh, it's like butter, like butter. Beauty. The so-so NCV performance, probably because we don't have a dedicated NCV filament going on here. There's nothing, nothing at all. It's basically embedded into the PCB, which is eh, too bad. Very top, we have our USB-C, and there's the uh, two-pin connector for the battery as well. Already going to put everything back together, come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Fenersi S1 smart meter slash kind of everything little meter. Hey, I like it. Good looking meter, has a great looking display, and it is fast. For a smart ranging meter, that is definitely important. It's accurate too, at least on the DC side of things. Resistance, a little, not so much, but hey, really, it's still in spec. Really wish this would have come with a tilt stand or a magnetic backer or something to prop it up because, you know, laying it flat is okay, but it's not gonna be like that all the time. Still, at the end of the day, you're getting a lot here for a cheap multimeter. Smart, good looking, accurate, and pocketable as well. If you go into manual mode when you want, it's definitely a bonus. And continuity wise, it was perfecto. The Fenersi S1 Smart Multimeter Extraordinaire, which has an admirer, by the way gets a solid 3.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.